In this lesson, we are going to learn what transformer pipeline is and in what situations it can help us. We will be learning about it by creating an instance of it. Before getting started, we should do an overview of what we learned and see how it is going to be useful in this situation. We learned about creating pipelines with data collector. We moved data around and manipulated data on the go. Main purpose of a data collector pipeline is to collect and move the data. We can manipulate data, but this is not the main focus of the data collector. This means there can be some challenges when we try to manipulate data with computationally heavy operations. In order to overcome these challenges, we present the transformer engine. Transformer engine is an execution engine that runs data processing pipelines on Apache Spark. Apache Spark is an open source product that leverages cluster computing technologies in order to process data fast and efficiently. Transformer Engine acts as a client for deployed Apache Spark nodes. With this way, we can take advantage of Spark's performance benefits without the need of writing our own Spark application. Let's deploy an instance of the Transformer Engine in order to understand its benefits. First, we check if we have an active environment. You can use the left sidebar and expand the setup menu. Click on the Environments button in order to go to your Environments page. Usually one default is created when you create your account. If you do not have one, you can create it from here. Click to the Create Environment button, add name and tags to your environment. We are going to use the self-hosted version for this tutorial, but you can always use Amazon Web Services and Google Cloud Platform integrations if you have your setup there. Before continuing to the setup, I would like to give a tip. Anytime you are stuck on something or cannot understand what a setting means, hover over the question mark next to the setting. In our case, let's say you wanted to check advanced settings and you have never heard of nightly builds. You can always use the question mark to explore more about it. Let's save and continue with user permissions. In my case, I won't be adding anyone to this environment, so I click Save and Next. After finishing the setup of the environment, we click Activate and Exit. Our environment should be ready to go now. Before creating a transformer pipeline, we need to deploy a transformer engine. In order to do that, we use the left sidebar to go to the Deployments page, clicked to the Create a Deployment button. We name our deployment, select Self-Managed as Deployment Type, select Environment, select Transformer as Engine Type, and select Latest Versions Available before adding any tags. In this second part, we can configure the engine. We can enable and disable commonly used stage libraries from here. We can go more in depth about our configuration by clicking here and opening the Advanced Configuration screen. If you are going to use external sources, you can use it from here. We can add our labels and go to the installation configuration. We have tarball and Docker options. In this tutorial, we are going to use the Docker image option. I will not be adding any other users, so I save this part as it is. We click the start and generate install script in order to get our command for installation. We need to have Docker installed and set up in order to use this command. I copy and paste the command and let it do its installation. We have the option to wait and verify installation of the engine. We can always use the sidebar to check our deployed engines after finishing these steps. When we finish our installation, we can start creating a transformer pipeline. Using the sidebar, we can go to the Build menu and find pipelines underneath it. We can click Create Pipeline, fill name and description, select Pipeline Type, and start configuration. For our case, I'm going to use one of sample pipelines in order to show features, but you can start from scratch using blank. I can select one of the predefined pipelines here and select the authoring engine. 
we are not going to add people, so we are skipping this again. Now, we created our pipeline, we can view it in the canvas by clicking this button. When nothing is selected, we see general pipeline settings like name, description, labels, execution mode, and other related settings. We can set if we are going to do streaming processing or batch processing from here. We can check other settings like cluster settings, parameters related to pipeline like directories. We can change notification settings and we can do advanced per-processing if we like to. We can see stages on the screen already laid out because we selected a sample pipeline while setting it up. I will be showing what some of them do in order to understand this pipeline better. One difference we have compared to the data collector pipeline is that we have multiple origin stages. We can have as many origins as we need, but we also need to think about our cluster's processing power. Let's look at our pipeline. We have two file origin stages, one for reading retail information, one for reading store information. When we click on stages, we can see stage specific information in the UI. Every stage has its own settings that you can discover. For example, in this origin stage, we read from files, so we have general settings and file-related settings like directories, patterns, data formats, and schema modes. We can get general information of the stage by clicking on the info button on the left. We can check actual data flowing from the stage by clicking on schema on the left. Since this is an origin stage, we only have an output schema. We can see data fields, types, and order. This should be similar for the second origin stage, since they are the same type of stage. We can see that we connect these two stages to one stage. This next stage performs operations on data and stages that perform operations and transform data are called processor stages. This stage is called join by store zip. If a stage name is not descriptive at first glance, we can check its description. Here the description says join sources by store zip field. We can check the second tab named join in order to get in-depth information. We can see we have a join type setting, join criteria setting, a matching field list where we can define joins based on fields we add. We can use schema to see actual data transformations happening in this processor stage. We have two input schemas coming from two origin stages. We know what our processor stage does, joins data based on rules we set. We can see in the output schema, we have one schema, and at the first field, there is store zip field. We get all information from both schemas, put the store zip field at first, city and population fields to the end of our output schema and pass it to the next stages. Let's check our next processor stages. When we look at the top processor stage, we see its name is generate ID. When we click on it, we have two tabs on configuration. One is general as usual and the other one is expressions. We can click on it in order to see what is happening. When we click, we see expression fields that we can define. Most of the time, you will not have any hard time to understand what is going on. But if you do, you can always click info and read the type and description of the stage. It can give more insights. Back to the expressions tab. We see we run SQL expressions on data flowing from this stage. We can slowly start to understand why we need a transformer engine in order to work with data transformations at scale. This is a small sample pipeline that does some transformations, but for production scale, you can guess these nodes on the pipeline will be a lot more and you will need a lot more processing power. Even in this small sample, we make joins. We generate data on the go based on what we have. We have a router stage here that sends data to other processor stages, and there are calculations happening in those stages. In the end, we write results we get to the disk in multiple places. This is an introduction to what we can do with the transformer engine and why we need it. In the upcoming lesson, we will be learning about the transformer engine more in depth, and we'll see its architecture. We will be discovering how it utilizes Apache Spark in order to give us better processing capabilities.